Hi, today we're going to talk about a technique called variableization. And this is a really, really important technique for any designer because it's going to help you solve all sorts of problems, ranging from basic questions like, you know, how do I get a job? You know, how do I do good interviewing? How do I get people to agree with my ideas in my company? Or how do I build credibility and trust for my thought process within the organization? Or even how do I become influential within my organization? So all of these challenges that we face as designers are very easily solved by this technique called variableization. And I'm going to be talking about it. So today, we're going to be talking about this technique. And again, it's a pragmatic UX technique. For those of you that are first-time viewers, you don't understand what pragmatic UX is. Pragmatic UX is, is a philosophy and a style of doing uh, work that is practical and gets you immediate results. All right. So that's why we call it a pragmatic UX technique. Um, so when we think about the pragmatic UX technique of how do you do variableization, the first step that you have to do is you have to understand, well, what, why am I solving the problem? So that's where you're defining your objectives. The second part is, well, what are all the different elements in there that I can play with? What are the variables that I can play with? that will help me solve the problem. And the final thing is once you've defined your variables, then you evaluate the final solutions. And so when you do this three-step process, you can very quickly look at a problem, look at the options that are available in front of you and very quickly decide which solutions work for you. So let's go on to the next slide. So there are, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop this uh, in three parts. And uh, the first day, we're going to talk purely about the first part. We're only going to be talking about widgets. And again, for those of you that have been part of my, you know, uh, design systems or design patterns, uh, program training and all that, you probably, this is a repetition for you. But what I'm trying to do is I'm going to talk about how variableization can, you know, uh, be applied to a small micro problem all the way to something as complex as designing your portfolio or doing an interview task, or even kind of designing experiences when you're at work. So today we're gonna to talk about how you would do use variableization to design widgets. The next uh, session we will talk about experiences. And after that, we'll talk about how you would use variableization to do your portfolios or your interview tasks, or even interview for a job. So these are the three different steps. And again, for those of you that are coming new and you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do, because when you subscribe, you do get, and of course, uh, click on the bell icon so that you get notified every time we drop a new uh, training program or a training content on into our channel. All right, that said, let's go on to today's session. So let's think about something as simple as a text box, okay? And this is a text box, and how would you design this text box? So first, let's actually think about, you know, uh, and this seems really simple, but let's first ask, what are the objectives we are trying to solve for? So if we go on to the next slide, we're going to see, well, you know, if you want to look at the objectives, there are many, many objectives that you can optimize for if you think about it at a very abstract level. You can think about accuracy, you can th think about efficiency, you can think about people being able to recognize, you can think about time to value, you can think about consistency, and so on and so forth. But the idea here is, well, how do you decide which of these metrics are going to be important for you? And I think that's the first step when you have to step back and say, well, why are you doing what you're doing? So let's go on to the next slide and say, well, why are we doing it? So now we get the context. It's like, well, you're trying to design a text field to take a date of birth data from senior citizens. So your goal is to reduce their effort. But from a business perspective, your intention is to reduce errors. So that is really important. So when you start thinking about it, when you think about the context, well, you, you have senior citizens maybe having memory problems, may not be familiar with the technology. So therefore they want to be careful and deliberate about entering the data. And, you know, date of birth again is a fairly critical thing. So when you think about a date of birth and the intention is they want to apply, they want to enter their date of birth. So they're going to be applying for government benefits. So a critical component of this is error prevention. So now, let's actually stop and think about, well, okay, so we know that we want to reduce errors and the cost of making errors is very high. 
and you have folks that are that may or may not be familiar with the technology so how would you then think about a simple thing like a text box so let's go on to the next slide so let's look at all the variables and there are multiple variables i'm just going to look at three of those variables uh you could also look at interaction uh you know how how does something animate and stuff but you know just for the sake of understanding the concept of variableization we're just going to look at three variables you have a label on top and then you have the box and then you have an input prompt inside that says hey type your name in here okay so those are the basic three variables that you would probably have to play with so let's actually start looking at how many different ways can we play with these variables so let's go on to the next slide so if you're thinking about representation of the label well you could have a label or you could have an icon or you can have an icon and a label or you could have no icon and no label and that's also possible and so it, just by representing the label you there are four variations of that you also can think about positioning so you can position the label inside where you're left justified or right justified or you can position the label outside of the box itself where it's on the left right top and bottom of the specific uh box and in both of those in all of those cases it can either be left justified or right justified so just by looking at the label there are 31 possible ways that you can you know talk about presenting your labels now let's look at labels and positioning by the way yeah so there are 31 ways to your to do your labels and positioning now let's go on to the next one so let's look at the box size so the box doesn't have to be the same size every time so you could have a large box a medium sized box or a small box again for simplicity you could have the box aligned horizontally or it could be vertical and you can have it segmented and again when you think about segmentation it could be you know what what segmentation means is are you breaking the box into smaller pieces so you could have a box that just one big box or a you know or you could have a box that's three little big boxes three small boxes or you could have one medium sized box and one large sized box and again these are different variations of it but again you we are just going to look at a high level that segmentation is a variable that you can play with so you have 12 variations uh, just from a box perspective when you're looking at the size orientation and segmentation components now let's go on to the third variable so we assume that the third variable is relatively standard so we're not going to get into the complexity because just by looking at you know just the label in the box you would have 372 variations and so now let's actually start thinking how we're going to solve the problem let's go on to the next one for those of you that have a question like yeah you know a lot of these solutions are not possible here's the proof for you depending on the kind of language or the culture or the context you have many many examples of the same text box and these are all available on the web so depending on which you know language you search in or which website you go to you will see a lot of these variations of text boxes so it is very possible uh, and all of those are realistic solutions depending on the problem that you're solving so let's go on to the next slide so now let's actually start looking at labels so what are all the possibilities so you can have left justified horizontal labels so i think one thing that we want to understand is well are we going to keep it horizontal or vertical we assume it's an english language interface and therefore a horizontal interface is a horizontal text box is probably uh, the 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 most logical solution and so now when we are looking at left justified horizontal labels now what it does when you left justify the labels is you're increasing the distance between the box and the label all right it's good for languages which you know um which work like english or latin languages or you know indic languages these work very well it's good for forms where uh accuracy is needed and the reason why uh, you know it it helps promotes more accuracy is because there's a little bit of a distance it allows it forces people to read and correlate the text box to the label and so it ensures that the person who's entering the data slows down just a little bit to make sure that they are not making a mistake and so the positives are of course you know it's easy to scan vertically because everything is aligned and you can just literally scroll one top to bottom and see what are all the options 
but the negative is it takes a little bit of time but that's not necessarily bad depending on the context that you have so let's go on to the next slide so here's one where you're looking at right justified horizontal labels so this is really good again works with the languages that we're talking about um you know and it's very very easy so you don't have to spend that extra second to figure out hey is this label connected to this text box so it's it's it enables quick data entry uh however because it's left justified and because the words the labels themselves might have different sizes in this case of course the labels are similar sizes so it's it's a little bit harder to visualize but if you look at the amazon uh, example you know the the full name the address the city all of these are different sizes and so it's it's a it's a little bit harder to scan vertically because everything is for different size but you know um it it gets the job done faster so that's good again you know, it's it's a context in which you're trying to apply it. So now let's look at the other solutions. So do you want to have top uh, aligned labels? Well, the advantage again is it's uh, top aligned labels are very easy to scan. It allows you to save your you know your horizontal space. It's you know and it's easier to scan vertically. And however, the bigger problem is if you're top aligned, it, it actually eats up a lot of your space, your vertical space. So it's going to force your customers to scroll a little bit. But again, if scrolling is not a problem, that's a good solution. Let's go on to the next slide. So now let's look at write horizontal labels. This is really good for Arabic languages, you know, or languages that write from, uh, you know, right to left. So when you start looking at those kinds of languages, these interfaces are great. But again, you know, the same logic applies that you would apply for Eng English language. The more distance you have between the box and the label, the, the slower it, uh, the more time it takes for people to correlate and it slows down the input process. So that's what it is again for uh, Arabic interfaces. Let's go on to the next one. So now we're looking at box sizes. So when you look at box sizes, again, this is what is a concept called shape coding. So I would encourage you to look it up if you, uh, you know, have some time. But when you look at box sizes, the size of the box indicates or gives you a clue about what kind of information is expected to go in. And so when you're looking at short boxes, it's it's very clear that, you know, hey, you know, there's only so much information that you can enter in. So there's a lot of expectation. And so the shape itself communicates, uh, you know, what kind of data is expected to get in. Uh, when you're looking at large and then, uh, you know, medium sizes, again, it's good for taking in single word uh, numbers, things like those. And again, keep in mind, uh, you know, the size of the text box is also a clue to people uh, you know, about how much information is expected from them. And there's lots of research that's been done again. You know, Google did this research where they tried different text box sizes and they found that the longer the text box, the more keywords, more more alphabets or longer the query terms are, uh, you know, that are entered. So again, there's a lot of science behind that. But again, simply put, you know, smaller boxes indicate limited amount of information, larger boxes indicate a more flexible kind of an interface. Let's go on to the next slide. So when you look at segmented versus non-segmented, segmented is really good when you have data that is naturally segmented. And so when you look at it, it's like date of birth. Well, yeah, I need to put my month, my year and my, and my day. So three boxes makes complete sense. If you're looking at a telephone number, segmentation makes sense but interestingly in a telephone number is three three four so what you do is you would put small small medium box and that would automatically visually communicate that you would put a telephone number in there so again you know you can either segment the box or you may not segment the box but segmentation allows people to recognize what that information is again going back to that shape coding concept so you can recognize the shape and you can tell what information goes in there so let's go on to the next slide in all, how many variations should you consider? Because just like this, I believe there were, what, 200 and 324 variations. So there were 324 variations. So uh, I may be wrong, my memory might, might be slipping. But, you know, of all those number of variations, well, which variations actually make sense out of here? So let's just look at it. So you want something that's going to slow you down. So if it's slowing you down, ideally you want to be, you know, your labels won't want to have a little bit of space. You don't want, you want to be left justified so that you're, you know, it's, uh, it, it takes that second for people to slow down and think about it. You want to make sure it's a label so there is no ambiguity because if you put an icon, again, it might have multiple interpretations. 
So you want to have a label. Um, if you were to put the content, uh, the label outside, it's making it right, right justified. If you're putting it on the left, you want to right justify it. Or if you're putting it on the top, you're left justifying it. So again, there are three different variations out there. And then when you do the box, you can do a medium box that is horizontal and segmented. So let's go on. So in all, there's probably two variations that you can enter in. So just so you look at those boxes, it makes sense because you're kind of taking the date of birth. And so that's what it is. So let's go on to the next one. So now here's the challenge. Okay. You've seen how we have solved the problem of text boxes for, you know, date of birth for folks that are older. But here's the challenge for you. What if you were now to take, I'm going to change the context, you were to take the date of birth from young people and they want to generate their horoscope online, okay? So the key differences are you want it to be quick and people want the results to be shown up as quickly as possible. So again, the user expectation is quick interfaces, but from you know even your interface, you want to support speed. So how would you do it? So let's look at the next slide. So here are four choices for you and think about it. And if necessary, watch the video again. And I know I speak a little bit uh, fast. If you want me to speak a little bit slower, please do comment and let us know. But, you know, here are four solutions and it doesn't have to be a text box. It could be a drop down button. It could even be a calendar widget. So here are four choices for speed for young people to check their horoscope. Which of these choices would you select? And so do uh, comment and share your feedback and we will, you know, put in the answer uh, probably in a couple of days. But uh, thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't already, do subscribe and click on the bell button so that you can be notified when the next installment of this variableization class comes in. The next time we're going to be talking about how you're going to design experiences how at work. How would you design like a solve for a problem that you've been given at work? And after that, we will talk about how you will use the exact same technique to solve for how to create your portfolio, do an interview task, or even interview or answer the questions that you've been asked in an interview. So thank you very much for watching and do comment and we'd love to hear back from you. Bye-bye.